The solar grid tie has been tied to the grid for a year now, November 26, 2019, until November 26, 2020. Now we'll take a look at the results and what it costs to install. It's November 26, 2020. It's been a year to date since this grid tie system was connected to the grid and this will be the total output that we had for the whole year 2802.6 kilowatt hours for a whole year it's not putting anything out right now it's kind of dark and cloudy. it's about 9 a.m. in the morning I'm not sure if this will be the typical amount per year, as last winter was quite a bit longer than normal. And even this fall, October is more like winter, so it's kind of like we missed a whole month of fall. So I'm not sure if we got the average sunny days this year. The largest output months were June and July, and last December and January were the least amount. They only put about a third. The amount of June and July. In June it generated almost all the electricity that we used except for 16 kilowatt hours. The price per kilowatt hour here is 12 cents. With a total of 2,802.6 kilowatt hours and at 12 cents per kilowatt hour, the total savings for the year was three hundred and thirty six dollars and thirty one cents for the cost breakdown I spent nine hundred and sixty eight dollars and sixty cents for the solar panels that was with shipping I did some shopping around and I found the best price on eBay and for the inverter and some of this other stuff the Alt E store was online too. That was also the best price I could find for the inverter and stuff. I spent you know, $1,203.14 here. In other places online I found some good price for ground lugs and solar water, wire and solar labels. You have to have solar labels placed in the right spot in order to pass inspection and you can't get by without that. So for my total internet shopping, I spent $2,268.42. And at my local co-op, electric co-op, they had to evaluate it and do the commissioning, and they charged a fee of $161.06. And the rest of this stuff here, the hardware, mounting hardware, conduit wire, breaker, grounding rods, I got all this stuff from Home Depot and Menards and I spent $354.69 on that. And so the total of that so far was $2,784.17. And then for the electrical inspections, I was charged $70. So the total cost for the materials was $2,000. Eight hundred and fifty-four dollars and seventeen cents. That's just material. I suppose it took me maybe two days to install this. I had to do some digging, so that took a while. And I guess the most time that spent was just waiting for inspections and getting things approved. Now that after it's been installed, what I wish I would have done, I didn't know at the time. I wish I would have got a larger inverter. I could have got an inverter twice the size of the one I got for only a few hundred dollars more and that would have allowed plenty of room to add more panels later without having to buy another inverter if I needed to. But this is all done being uncertain on what the outcome would be and this is the way it ended up. If the yearly rate of production continues at $336 a year, it'll pay for itself in about eight and a half years. But I'd like to look at it a little bit differently. Since I already have it paid for, 
I like to look at it that I'm saving $336 a year. The rest of the story is about how this installation went. This was something I always wanted to do. To me, it was fun and exciting. And for me, it looked pretty straightforward and not that difficult of a project, really. But then, real life happened. This location isn't the first place the solar panels and grid tie system was installed. It was first installed on the south facing side of the roof on the house. And it fed into that black boot on the peak and down into the utility room. The power from the panels came down from that conduit there. The inverter was mounted there. And the AC disconnect was outside. It exited that hole right there. I got some other wires in there right now. And everything was connected up to the service panel. Everything was secured from the weather and everything was working and functioning and I thought should have been good. The procedure for the grid tie was to fill out an application from the local electric co-op and make a drawing of the whole system, you know, identifying each part, where they would go, the size and the manufacturer, and then their electrical engineer would take a look at it and approve it. I got the approval and installed it and the next step was to get it inspected. Now the local electrical inspector wasn't qualified to inspect solar so he had another inspector come with him who could do the solar. I called and they came on September 25th and they found two potential problems. The first one was he didn't know if the conduit I used for the DC wiring was correct. The second problem was that the DC disconnect integrated with the inverter probably wasn't right and I may need a remote disconnect up by the solar panels. So it didn't pass and the solar inspector said he would look into these things but don't take anything apart you know, until he can confirm what needs to be done. I got the inverter from the Alt E store and they have very good customer support and I called them up and they gave me recommendations for different kind of disconnects and stuff and I sent this along to the inspector to see if he would approve of any of these. In this whole mix the solar electric code was cloudy and unclear and I couldn't get answers from the inspector. There is a national electric code but not every place has adopted it or maybe just part of it or they don't have the current version and it changes every few years. Somewhere in the summer of 2019 my area put into effect the 2017 code for solar and that caused a little more confusion. To make a long story short there came a lot of waiting phone calls, emails, unanswered questions, and just more and more waiting. The solar specter still wasn't able to decide what he wanted in order to pass the system. Finally, about the 1st of November, the inspector told me with the latest code I was going to need a remote disconnect on each solar panel. I added all this up and it was going to cost more for these remote disconnects than the solar panels cost. The situation was pretty frustrating, but I came up with an alternative. I could disassemble this whole solar installation and put it on a shed that I had and I wouldn't require any more parts. It was a hustle to get it done because winter was coming and the ground was freezing, but I was ready and called for inspection on November 5th. Then it was just more waiting again. And finally, on November 25th, the solar inspector showed up, he passed it, and the next day the power company came out, they commissioned it, and then they put it into service. And now you know the rest of the story.